This is One on One. We are pleased to be joined by Deb DeGilio, who is president, New Jersey, American Water Senior Vice President, Eastern Division of American Water. Good to see you, Deb. Good to see you. Let's fully disclose. We were on a bill. It like, sounds like we're in Vegas. We were at the Business and Industry <laughs> Association. We were talking about women empowerment, women's empowerment, right, about leadership. Three powerful women and me. And I listened to you and I thought, she's good. <laughs> Thank she's you. She's a great leader. First, before we talk about your leadership approach, talk about your organization. So I work for American Water. We're the largest publicly traded water and wastewater company in the United States. And we have operations everywhere from California to Hawaii to New York to New Jersey. So I'm curious about this. Your, your approach to leadership, and, and the tr people who know this know uh, as uh, part of what we do, I ask about uh, leadership of all great leaders, and this is part of our Women in Leadership series. Your approach to leadership, were you always as confident as what I saw in front of me at the Business and Industry Association when you were speaking? Uh, i probably still not that confident, Steve. Uh, I, think, I think I'm my own worst critic. You know, I mean, I think, uh, I think I'm smart, I think I work hard, but I always think I can do better. And uh, I love what you said at the conference about being a uh, lifelong learner, which I think is absolutely critical to being a, a, being a good leader. So if someone says, hey, this is it, I'm good enough. I'm done, yeah, <laughs> then <laughs> they should wrap it up. Yes, <laughs> and go that home. is not a good leader. It is not. But I'm curious about this. You've worked in a, an organization that has a hierarchy, okay? Mm -hmm. And you've had to move through. How have you managed that process of not just, well, I'm curious about that because you've been with the organization for a while and you moved mm -hmm. to a very high level. I have. So I think first and foremost, being a female, you have, uh, there is a higher standard. You'd love to say that that doesn't occur, but you there is really a higher standard. That. I do. Um, higher standard for different things, not necessarily work product, but you have, um, uh, you always have the question, I was talking to a colleague when we were driving up today, and I said, look, I know that uh, I'm not naive enough to think that people don't say, Deb got her job because she's a woman. And I, lo I long for the day when that doesn't happen, but the reality is we're still not there yet. Um, so I think that is really you know, what I mean when I say that. I don't believe, it's not work product. I think I have to deliver every day just like my male colleagues or any other colleagues I have. Mm. Um, so that standard's the same, but just that, that question of did she earn it or did they give her the job because she's a woman, I think is something that's around and it's still prevalent today. One more quick follow-up on this and then we'll get back to water. Because we also do a uh, companion, if you will, radio show, uh, podcast uh, called The Leadership Hour. So we're going to take some of this and use it there as well. And so I need to ask you this. Great. Do you think there's a significant difference? And if so, what is it between, you know where the question is going, right? I don't. Between men? <laughs> and women, by and large, in the way they lead? Uh, I find, in my experience, that uh, women are a little more collaborative. I mean, I wouldn't say all women are more collaborative or all men aren't collaborative, but I think you tend in to- In general. Um, in general, yeah. I think women are more collaborative. Because? Um, I think because we have to balance everything. You know, I mean, inside what and are outside we doing? of the work. Uh, <laughs> not as and much as we are. Really? <laughs> at home. Um, so I think that that makes us be a little bit easier or a little bit more comfortable balancing a lot of different things. Um, so I think because of that, it um, makes me collaborate and, um, and think more about all aspects of my job. Oh, I was fascinated. One more thing on this is that when we were at the conference, at the Business Industry Association conference, many of the women there had two phones, mm -hmm. one business phone and the other phone. Work phone. Family, this, yeah, that. Yeah, for um, me, it's one where it rings during the day, which is yeah. my personal phone. I know that there's a problem because my husband doesn't call me during the day. The school isn't going to call me unless there's a problem. Wow. So if my personal phone rings from, you know, 8 to 5, I know that something's wrong. And you have to deal with it. And I have to deal with it. Is that what you mean it. by juggling? I do. Yeah. And it's uh, if my work phone rings at night, I know that there's a problem there. So for me, it just <laughs> lets me know how urgent is the phone call and do I need to take Got it. it. Let's talk water. Biggest water challenge that you and your colleagues see in New Jersey and in the region is? Infrastructure, aging infrastructure. So in the utility space, particularly in water and wastewater, the infrastructure is old. And it's underground, and it hasn't been well cared for. So uh, making sure that we make investments in our infrastructure is crucial. Um, we invest at New Jersey American about a million dollars a day mm. in terms of infrastructure. And so that, I think, is something that the state of New Jersey and the whole country is struggling with. The biggest challenge to that is it simply, hey, we don't have the money, or some people arguing we don't have the money? Uh, for municipals, it can be how do they get access to funding. It's also affordability. I mean, I think customers, you have to balance all of the different household needs. So how much 
uh, the needs are infinite, and so how do you balance affordability mm -hmm. for customers with how much you invest, and how do you strike that balance for what the right uh, mix is in terms of investments versus how much customers can afford? Yeah, it's also fascinating. I know I'm jumping back and forth on the leadership thing. Did you actually say that half of your board is made up of women? I did. That's not an accident. It's not an accident. Go ahead. Uh, so I think really we made a conscious effort at a company level to say we need to look like our customer base. And our customer base is not, um, you know, it's Pretty 50%. Diverse. Yeah, it's very diverse. Uh, lots of different customers throughout, throughout the country. And so we made an effort. And it's just, it's not about a quota. It's about casting the net wider. And it's about a company-wide effort to make sure that you have diverse thoughts. Um, and when I say diverse, it isn't necessarily male versus female or different ethnicities or different genders or race. It's just different thoughts. You know, I mean, I'm from Wisconsin. I grew up in a small town. I was raised by a single dad. Um, and my colleague is a lifelong engineer, and I have a finance background. So it's, we're diverse not just because he's a man and I'm a woman, but we're diverse just because of our thoughts mm. and uh, what our experiences are and what our backgrounds are, what we bring to the table, what we can teach each other. Um, and I think the more you focus on how do you get a good view of all things from different issues, you're going to be a better company. Before I let you out of here, advice for anyone, particularly women watching this program, who say, I'm not the leader I want to be, and I'm not even sure I can be. You say that, what to them? I say you can be. And uh, trust yourself <clears throat> more than, you're probably smarter and better than you think you are. Um, but don't, uh, like we talked about earlier, don't lose a little bit of self-doubt. You know I mean? Be a lifelong learner. Um, but follow through. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And um, you can do it. Well done. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. It was great meeting you at that conference. It was and great meeting you, having you here. Thanks. Pleasure. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Georgian Court University, Valley Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the Russell Berry Foundation, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Summit Medical Group, and by... Adler Aphasia Center, transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.